fire and medical department has a new piece of equipment that could potentially save you eight to ten thousand dollars off your hospital bill. Joining me to discuss this new ventilator is Tim Burleson. Tim, thanks so much for being here with me today. It's nice to be here. Thank you, Marissa. So let's start off by just telling me a little bit about this new machine. Well, this is our new state-of-the-art transport ventilator made by CareFusion. It provides uh, high performance ventilations uh, to man help manage critical patients from the very young to the very old. It also allows paramedics to uh, provide continuous uh, care, respiratory care to our patients from the emergency scene all the way to the ER. And what makes this particular ventilator so unique? Well, what makes it so unique is it's like I say, it's state of the art. It's one of the very first uh, pieces of transport equipment that's uh, this small that we can take into any scene uh, that provides uh, a ventilator mode, which can help uh, breathe for people that we have to uh, provide an airway for as far as getting a tube down into their trachea um, that are not breathing on their own. It also provides what we call non-invasive ventilation for people who are breathing but they're, um, they're pretty critical where they're, they're, they're running out of gas and, and we need to try to help, help uh, maintain their breathing. So it assists them uh, with their own breaths. Okay, and as a department, why did we feel we needed these particular ventilators? Um, well, we wanted to keep up with standard of care. This provides a higher level of uh, standard of care to our patients. Um, like I say, it helps with patients that are um, that need to be intubated, which means that we have to put a uh, an airway, a tube down into their trachea and breathe for them. So they're not breathing on their own. This machine has that capability to do that. It also has the capability for the non-invasive ventilation. So patients who uh, might need this be able to be put this mask on and uh, they could be ventilated and this could assist their breath. It could uh, just uh, save them a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, financial costs down the road. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this can save someone time in the hospital and potentially money. Can you explain that a little bit more? That's correct, Marissa. This, this, with the technology that this has, it can uh, prevent us from intubating patients, like I say, by putting a, a, a tube down into their way and breathe for them, which we've had to do in the past. Without this machine, our next level of care for that patient, if they were about ready to have respiratory failure, um, was to, to go ahead and intubate them and put that tube down, place that tube in their airway. By doing that, that, that brings a lot of other risks. We can uh, manage their airway, but however, the long-term effects of that has been documented to cause uh, infection. Uh, trauma to the lungs. The, the lungs are very sensitive uh, muscle, muscle t or, uh, tissue that, um, that could get easily damaged just by us placing that type of airway. Some patients still will need that, but this will uh, give us other options. We've already found that uh, this is provided in the few months that this has been in service, it has been very successful and uh, patients that we otherwise would have um, placed that tube in their airway we have been able to put them on this mask, assist their ventilation, and help them breathe better. And by the time they got to the ER, they were doing significantly better. They were talking to us in full word sentences, which they were not when we showed up. Their oxygen level and their blood has increased, had increased to a point um, that they can uh, maintain that. So this is a, just a very great tool for, for the paramedics uh, to uh, provide our patients. So Tim, are we the only ones in the state that have this ventilator? That's correct. Not only are we the only one in the state, we're the only one in probably the world that has this type of technology on a fire apparatus or a pre-hospital emergency equipment. There are other departments that have a capability of just using this mask, um, but when it comes into a ventilator, you know, to a patient who may have been part of a, a traumatic incident, they have had a fall or in a car accident, who may not be breathing on their own, uh, they, <clears throat> they didn't have that capability other than to do a manual breaths, which we still have that. If there's any type of failure with this, um, which we haven't yet, uh, they're a pretty well-proven uh, piece of equipment, but we still have a backup to do that. This is far more sensitive to, to the patient. It has a lot of technology in here that senses pressures within the patient's body to help prevent any of those uh, lung injuries that we otherwise may have caused with, a, with, uh, with placing the tube in their airway. And how was our department able to obtain uh, this ventilator? That's a good question. These are very expensive ventilators. They're approximately $15,000 a piece. Um, to provide them on every fire apparatus in our department would have been uh, very, very costly to our citizens. We were fortunate enough to be able to secure uh, funds to the federal government through a grant. Um, and this could be also used for as a community, a metropolitan 
uh, mass casualty incident as well. They don't provide, they don't have to have oxygen. We do have oxygen we can add to them, but in the event we have a mass casualty, these have their own internal pumps that can provide that pressure where most other technology and, and current ventilators or, uh, or non-invasive ventilators, they don't have that capability. They have to be supported with oxygen. So what's nice about this is it could take room air and it could ventilate a patient appropriately. And with this grant funding, we were able to get one on each one of our apparatus? That's correct. We have 25 apparatus within the city of Mesa. Um, that includes the big ladder trucks and, and the engine companies. And each one of those have that. We have five spare ones we can use for training and as replacement as these uh, need to be uh, maintained for preventive maintenance. Okay, so overall, our department seems to really be leading the way then and providing just a higher level of care having this piece of a That's correct. We're we are a proactive department when it comes to medical services and, and uh, that's what our um, that's what the public demands from us and we like to bring that um, that standard of care to them. Tim, thanks so much for joining me. It's really interesting to find out about this new equipment that our firefighters are using on medical calls. It's my pleasure, Marissa. And if you would like to learn more about the Mesa Fire and Medical Department and how we're providing the best medical care to our residents please visit us at www.mesaaz.gov slash fire. Well, that's it for this edition. Please stay safe. And Tim, I think it's time to go grab some lunch. Sounds good to me.